Hello guys, in the last video I have discussed about different materials that can be used in the negative electrodes in lithium ion battery cells. If you remember, we looked at graphite, lithium titanate and also at silicon which can be used in the negative electrodes. Well, in this video we are going to look at materials that could be used for positive electrodes instead and it turns out that there are many more options from which we can choose. The first intracalation material that was discovered for positive electrodes and lithium ion battery cells was lithium cobalt oxide. And this material was discovered in 1980 by Professor Goodenough and his research team. This image shows the atomic crystal and structure of lithium cobalt oxide. Cobalt is shown as dark blue spheres and oxygen is shown as red spheres. In the structure, cobalt and oxygen form very tight electrochemical bonds with each other and these are not affected by lithium moving into and out of the material. And so, because these bonds are constant, they are shown with these planes and the blue planes that show the surface formed by the crystalline structure of these bonds. When lithium enters into the electrode and when lithium leaves the electrode, the structure of the lithium cobalt oxide is not actually changed, does not disturb this cobalt oxygen bond. As you see, the overall structure has layers of this cobalt oxide material. A lot like graphite has layers of graphene. And because cobalt oxide has this layered structure, it's often called a layered cathode material. The lithium atoms are free to enter and exit and to move around the space between the cobalt oxide layers. The chemical formula has the subscript for lithium is X. This might not seem common to you. It might seem unusual if you are more familiar with the chemical formula like H2O where the subscripts are integer number. The X in this formula is there to show that there is a variable amount of lithium in this structure. If there is no lithium at all in this structure then X is zero. This structure has much lithium as it can possibly hold. Then X is equal to one. And if the structure has some amount of lithium but not full lithium, then X is going to be a number between 0 and 1. And so we see that X is not described. It's actually an average over the whole electrode or at least over a local region of how much lithium is present, which is why it can be a fractional number. So as we charge a battery cell and discharge a battery cell, this value for x is going to change. The value indicates an electrode state of charge and it's what we call the stoichiometry. <laughs> Lithium cobalt oxide actually makes quite a good positive electron material and it's in very common use. You find it in lot of portable electronics and laptops and mobile phones. But there are some challenges when we can try to scale up the lithium cobalt oxide for very large battery cells for very large applications for example thinking about vehicle use or utility grade use one of the problem is that cobalt is very rare and so it's expensive it's also a toxic element and so we do not want to have too much of that getting thrown out by accident and entering in landfills another challenge with lithium cobalt oxide that may not be readily apparent is that we can only use about half of its theoretic capacity. If you think about the value of x, it can go between 0.5 and 1. If it goes below 0.5, we have some capacity degradation issues that happen. So in order to make this material more practical for large scale application, researchers have substituted different elements for some of the cobalt in the structure. If we substitute all of the cobalt with nickel, we end up with lithium nickel oxide and that actually has a higher energy density for the same amount of material. So we can store more energy. Lithium nickel oxide however has the higher energy density because it has higher voltage which is nice. But it also suffers from being less stable thermally meaning that if you overcharge the battery cell 
it's more likely to combust and that's very undesirable it's also possible to substitute other metals for cobalt we can substitute aluminum or chromium or manganese and these all give slightly different properties when we do so maybe the most popular substitution presently is to replace some of the cobalt with nickel and some with manganese and so we end up with the nickel cobalt manganese or ncm and this material has exactly the same atomic crystalline structure as you see here it's just that some of the cobalt is replaced with other elements and the nickel in the structure tends to increase the voltage and the manganese tends to make the material more thermally stable which is a desirable property at this point in history many automotive battery packs are made with this ncm or nmc type of battery cell another alternative is to replace some of the cobalt with nickel and some with aluminum and this is an nca battery cell and this is the type of battery cell that is used in tesla automobiles at this point in time we can investigate a completely different structure for positive electrodes which is lithium manganese oxide and this material was also discovered by professor goodenough and his research team the image shows the atomic scale crystalline structure of this material and the blue spheres are manganese the red spheres are oxygen this structure might look familiar to you if you have a good memory we saw it in lithium titanate oxide which is a possible negative electrode material the name of this crystal structure is cubic spinel and as you can see there's many internal vacancies that could hold lithium but these vacancies are organized if you will see the twisted three dimensional pathway that allows the diffusion of lithium in three directions it can enter in from the top and bottom it can enter in from front and back as well so from all the three directions and because of that we can call this a three dimensional structure if you contrast it with the layered structure of lithium cobalt oxide in that structure lithium could enter front and back and left and right but it could not enter top and bottom so lithium could move only in two directions and we call that a two dimensional structure in the chemical equation for lithium manganese oxide notice again there's an x in the subscript for lithium and in this material x can go from 0 all the way up to 2 which is different from what we saw in lithium cobalt oxide however if x is larger than 1 the material tends to dissolve in the electrolytes commonly used in lithium ion battery cells and for that reason we use x from 0 to 1 almost always in practice a huge advantage of lithium manganese oxide versus lithium cobalt oxide or even nmc or nca is that it is less expensive because manganese is very common and it's also safer but the drawback as i have kind of hinted already is that it can have short life it turns out that the manganese in the short structure is very susceptible to acidic electrolyte conditions now we don't make acidic electrolytes on purpose but if there is any moisture in the air when we are building the cells this moisture get absorbed in the electrolyte and it can combine with some common electrolyte salts and the hydrogen from the water and the moisture and some fluorine from the salts can combine into hydrofluoric acid This hydrofluoric acid is really terrible stuff and it's very powerful acid and it can eat away the manganese and the lithium manganese oxide and so the manganese can dissolve and so the positive electrode structure basically dissolves and there are less vacancies that are able to hold lithium and so we have capacity loss so when we build these cells we try to eliminate moisture but it's not possible to eliminate it completely we build the cell in an environment where the electrolyte is injected in what's called a dry room where we have evacuated as much moisture as we reasonably can but there will always be some moisture in the electrolyte sometimes by adding different chemical to the electrolyte that preferably scavenges the acid so that the acid attacks these added materials instead of attacking the electrode itself and sometimes you see people coating the electrode particles with something 
that protects the particle from the acid. Any battery cell that uses lithium manganese oxide is going to have something as part of its design in order to extend its life. But it's usually not disclosed to you exactly what that is. It's a trade secret, almost always. A third variety of positive electrode active material was once again discovered by Professor Good Enough's research team. These are the olivine style phosphate. The most commonly found member of this family is called lithium ion phosphate. This material is very inexpensive and it's very non toxic, which is a good news. But unfortunately, it has low energy density because of the low open circuit potential of the material. And it also has low specific energy because iron is very heavy element. Its structure also makes it difficult to get a lot of power out of the material. So it's often a low specific power material. The image shows the structure and in this image iron is represented by the brown spear and phosphorus by gray spears and oxygen by red spears and the lithium again as purple spears. And in this overall structure, the iron oxide, the FeO6, forms the brown octahedral crystal shapes, and the phosphate, the PO4, forms the gray tetrahedral shapes. And in the image, you can see that the lithium atoms can go in only one direction into this tunnel like vacancies in the structure. It's not free to flow in two dimensions like it is in the layered cathode or in three dimensions like it is in the cubic spinel cathode and so that it tends to reduce the power that's available another challenge using the material is that it has very low electronic conductivity it's difficult for the electron to move around in the active material and the way to get around this problem is by coating the material with conductive additives like carbon black so that the electron can flow on the surface of the particle through the carbon black from the electrode to the current collector and out of the cell. There are different candidates for positive electrode materials, but I have shown you the most common ones. Essentially, every lithium ion battery cell on the market has a graphite negative electrode. The distinguishing factor between the chemistries of different cells is therefore what is going on in the positive electrode. And so it's quite common to refer a cell by the chemistry of its positive electrode only. We might talk about a lithium cobalt oxide cell or we might talk about a NMC cell or a LMO cell or a lithium iron phosphate cell or something like that. And you have already seen that you can predict a little bit about the different power capabilities of this material. Depending whether it's a one dimensional or a two dimensional or a three dimensional structure. It also turns out that these different materials have different voltage properties that lead to different energy densities. Remember that the voltage of a battery cell is equal to the potential at the positive electrode current collector minus the potential of the negative electrode current collector. Therefore, for a high voltage battery cell, you would like to have a positive electrode that has a high potential. The figure shows the open circuit potential of this different electrode material as a function of how much lithium is in them, the stoichiometry or the electrode state of charge. You can see that lithium ion phosphate has the lowest potential of all of those that we have considered. This means that lithium ion phosphate cells tend to have low energy density because of this. You can see that other types of positive electrode materials have slightly different voltage characteristics, but all of them turn out to be higher than lithium ion phosphate. So there are advantages and disadvantages of all these materials. It doesn't matter which one you choose. It turns out to be an engineering effort as always to balance the trade-off to find the best one for your particular application. So this brings us to the end of this particular topic and from here we are going to move on and look at the electrolyte, the solvents and the salts chosen for lithium ion battery cells and separators.